at some of the functionality of the RV082 that applies to businesses and we're going to kind of pop through some of these some fast some slower but it hopefully by the end you're going to get a chance to see how do we apply this network system to a business we're going to look at port forwarding WAN failover switch management a DMZ our access list we're going to look at a firewall and access list we're also going to use our firewall in terms of keywords or domain whitelist and blacklist. We're going to look at QoS, which is very important today with Voice over IP. And then we're going to look at VPN. We're going to the router's homepage and we're going to log on. And we're going to take a look and drive around a little bit with this interface. So the, the basic fundamentals of this particular integrated router is, of course, the setup section. We're going to look at DHCP. We're going to look at system management and that will break down basically the overall structure of the integrated router. Port management is all about the switch. So port management is all about the switch. Then we'll get into the firewall. Many features and functionalities concerning the firewall. Well, this is the Cisco Protect Link web service. You can purchase this and it, it gives you kind of a, a, a pre-filtered internet you can do that if you want. Then the VPN section, we're going to look at syslogs. How do we maintain logging on who is trying to ping us, who is trying to scan the router on the, on the firewall side and what kind of activity may be suspicious. And we're going to put that over in a sysfall server. And then if you want to do it the easy way, there's a wizard that walks you through step by step. So that's the general functions that we're going to walk through. So on the front page on the system summary, there's some things that are important for the tech. One is the serial number in case you need to upgrade the firmware. You want to make sure you have the serial number. The actual uh, model number, we can see that right now we're working as a gateway router. You can change that mode. This is a feature of more expensive routers that you don't have probably at home. This shows you your firmware version so you can see if you need updates. And this is a MD5 checksum, making sure it's a validated firmware. This is a local area network subnet. It's a 172.16.0.1, and you can see my subnet. I am, I am using IP6, and you can see my IP6 address. Um, this shows you uptime. It's been up two days, eight hours, and 21 minutes. So that will be something important to look at to see if the router has been rebooted. Sometimes it's helpful, especially if you're working with a new piece of equipment that you're not as familiar with and you're starting it up for the first time, try launching the setup wizard. A lot of times it will walk you through some steps that you may have th not thought about. So it doesn't mean you're going to use the setup wizard. In fact, in our labs, you're not. But it's good to walk through it and just kind of walk what, what is needed to configure and set up an integrated router. Another important thing to remember about when you're dealing with this particular router is this has very good context sensitive help. So over here you can click on the help button and it will actually bring up really it's the manual online. So it's very handy when you get stuck or you're not sure about something. Go to a page or open up a dialog box and hit help. It will give you the help for that particular element. So here we are in the system summary page. Um, this is all our land information. You can take a look at the land. As we slide this page down, we can see the Ethernet ports that are on are linked up. One of them is the daisy chain going from my home network to the RV082 and my video PC that I'm working with. This is my WAN connection. You can see it. I've got one WAN connection active right now. When we set up the dual WAN, we're going to see that both of these are connected and functioning and we'll have that failover capability. And over here, of course, is our WAN. You can see we have both IP4 and IP6. We have only WAN, one WAN interface being used right now. And notice it's a 192.168.1.109. I'm pulling off of my private local area network at my house. It's actually my ISP. When you get into labs, this is all going to be 1029 numbers. So this will be the OCPS LAN that will be uh, acting like your, your ISP. So just, just be aware of that. At the bottom of our summary table, you can see our firewall status. We can see what's on, what's not. We can see we have no access rules. We're going to take a look at that. Uh, remote management. In other words, you cannot remote from the outside 
in and remote and manage this router. That's a very important feature. That's a big violation of security if you can remotely manage your, your uh, router. Notice no VPN tunnels are being used and this, the uh, syslog server is not active and there's nothing being stored. So we want to correct all those, get those set up and configured. Very quickly, we're on the setup section of the main menu. We're looking at network. Some ISPs really are, impo it's important that you have a host name that they will give you. In other words, when you uh, purchase their service, they're going to give you a sheet of paper or send you an email with this kind of information, and you're going to have to plug that in. In most cases, it's an arbitrary value, some kind of random serial number, something that uh, Cisco will generate. It's not critical, not important. You can see we're doing the dual stack, both IP4 version 4 and IP version 6. You can see my gateway is going to be 172.16.0.1 in my subnet mask. Because my WAN is Ethernet, I have a MAC address, must have that, a NIC on the LAN and on the WAN. So I have a net network card on both sides of this router. A lot of the functionality that we're going to be showing you in the R RV082 amazingly can be gotten free with a firmware upgrade on your home router. Not everything, but a lot of the functionality that we're going to expose you to that's in a real business network, you can actually play with and try using ddwrt.com's firmware upgrades. You have to locate your router, see if, it's, if there's a firmware available, and then learn how to upgrade the firmware of your router. Most of the things that I'm demonstrating, you can do with your home router also. Now, one thing to remember is the electronic packages inside the router that we bought are much more comprehensive than the home router that you have. So keep in mind, although you may have a lot of this functionality, your overall performance of your home router will not, will not compare to what, we, what we're using right now. So here we can enable multiple subnets. We'll talk about that. We can actually make this gateway a edge router, and this is very powerful. We're gonna look at that in just a minute. Here we can configure the WANs. If you wanna automatically configure them right now, they're pulling an IP address automatically from the ISP. You can put a static IP. You can set this up as PoE over ethernet if you're DSL. You can set this up many ways. We'll take a look at that in a minute. This is enabling the DMZ. We'll, we'll get into the DMZ later. And of course, if you don't save, it doesn't save. So be sure to do that. So let's begin to talk about configuring the WAN first. I'm going to go to the configuration page. And you can see you have a drop down menu. There are many options. Obviously, you can obtain an IP, ad IP address automatically from your ISP. They may send you via email a static IP configuration. You're going to plug it in. If you're DSL, you're going to use point-to-point -point, uh, over uh, point-to-point protocol over Ethernet. You're also you have point-to-point -point tunneling protocol. Uh, notice there's a lot of every time I choose a different option, you can see a whole new set of configuration options are available. We can also do a transparent bridge where you actually put the LAN and the WAN, and you make the router in between a switch that's a very cool idea uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later because our of our particular configuration and what you're going to do in your lab you're going to set up your WANs for an, obtain an IP address automatically you can change the D DNS servers that you're using you're welcome to change that and in your labs you'll be actually asked to do that keep in mind when you've change your WAN DNS information. This is passed right on to the LAN DHCP server. So your DHCP server automatically inherits this information. So whatever you put on your DNS server IP addresses, whatever you use, decide you may use dynamicdns.org or you may use Google's DNS servers or whatever. This information is going to be passed right to your DHCP server on your local area network side. Let's take a look at a small retail business and how we can bring in our network and design our network so that it works for this business. Notice we got some point of sale systems, some manager laptops, 
and a server that runs the store. The manager has also asked you that he wants some security cameras to monitor the point of sales. They're going to be wireless. You're going to have some WAPs. These are not SOHO routers. These are simply WAPs, wireless access point. He wants them on separate subnets. He wants the camera and the wireless system that runs the camera to be on separate subnets so that he can monitor cash registers, uh, store activity, even, even if he's away from the store. He can monitor everything that's going on. So the first, we're going to talk about the production subnet. That's going to be a 172.16.0.x, and that's what we've been looking at on our RV082. And those are all connected by red. So we've got a server connected up to the switch, a couple point of sale, uh, the manager's laptops, the router's connected up to the switch also. So all of those red connections are on the same subnet, 172.16.0. Dot something and we'll lease IPs from say 100 to 150 in that subnet but notice he wants the security camera system totally separate from the production it doesn't want any employee to be able to monitor the security system only himself and assistant managers etc so we're going to put the security camera and the WAP for the security cameras on another subnet it's going to be the 172.16 dot one dot x and we'll statically assign those IPs in that subnet so how do we make those all work on our LAN interface on the routers local area network interface so I'm on the routers firmware page and I'm gonna go to setup notice that the, the the local area network is already established this was established when we configured it and we've told the router that the subnet that we're using presently is 172.16.0.1 and this is the IP address of the router's interface but when I add another subnet on my LAN I must create a new interface a new gateway for that subnet so I have to just like for this subnet 16.0 I have an interface and an IP address for that interface to to do this to add another subnet which is going to be 172.16.1 subnet I have to create a new interface on the same router this is actually going to transform the gateway router into an edge router so I'm going to enable I'm going to hit the add button so I've typed in 172.16.1 notice the subnet has changed right here right here at this octet right here at this octet right here my second octet I've now went from a 0 to a 1 so I've got a new subnet on my LAN and the router has to understand it and has to have an IP address for that new subnet let me see if I can explain so this is our router and this is our LAN and we already have a production subnet here let's say this line represents the existing 172.16.0 and all the IP addresses and hosts that are on that when I add another subnet on there I am going to create a new virtual interface and this one's going to have to have an IP address we already know the IP address for the 172.16.0 its interface is dot one so everybody that wants to go to the router knows to go to dot one but I'm creating a totally new subnet here so it they need an interface also and that's why I'm using this value right here this value is the IP information so that all the people on the dot one subnet know how to find the router so this dot one represents a new interface IP address so that these people on this subnet this new virtual subnet if you will um, can find the router so let's add it to the list and say OK and you can see we'll refresh here in a minute and you can see that we now our gateway is now an edge router has two subnets that is handling any IP addresses on 16.1 and 16.0 are going to be taken care of by my land router interface so back to our our retail outlet here so now these folks these guys are all on these two and all the security cameras are going to be on the 172.16.1 and now they know exactly how to find this router interface because they go to 172.16.1.1 
and all my production devices, they're in red, they know where to go, they've already been set up, they have a separate subnet. And now we have two subnets on the same local area network and we've provided that isolation so that the production users can't see the security cameras and yet the manager can access those wherever he is. So here we see the usefulness of a much more powerful interface solving practical business problems. We now can run multiple subnets, give the manager exactly what he wants to do, and it works. Back to our customer. The manager has come to you and said, look, I, I want to provide guest wireless services so that when people come into the store and they're buying things, they can use their phones on our wireless system. We have a free Wi-Fi provision. We don't want them to see our production network. We don't want them to see our security camera. We really just want these folks to be ushered right out through the router to the World Wide Web. We really don't, we want them totally isolated from our network. So let me show you how we can solve that problem with this router. So let's go to the switch management. I'm gonna to go to port management and this, I don't know why they call it ports, it's just this is your switch management interface. And I'm gonna plug in, I'm gonna choose the port, the ethernet port number four. And I can see that I can choose, I'm gonna connect directly the WAP the wireless access point that is going to be for guests only and it's going to send them right out the internet. This is the port that I'm going to choose and I'm going to come over here and I'm actually going to take them. Notice all the ports are on the same VLAN. Now we're using the switch to separate the activity of our network. And here I'm going to use port forward, port four, and I'm going to move this to uh, VLAN four. So when I plug my WAP into port four of my ethernet switch, it is going to be ushered right out the router. Any traffic on this port will never see the other VLANs. So everybody else is on VLAN one, but the WAP that gives guest wireless is on VLAN four and it will exit right out the router. It will never see the production network. It will never see it because those are on VLAN one. So here I'm using the VLAN functionality of my switch to give me the same isolation, very quick and easy, without doing another subnet. I just plug that guy right in there. He gets an IP address. I give him a static IP address and out the router he goes and they can surf the internet and get information but never see the local area network. So right away you begin to see we can do these, do the same thing different ways. One, we can use the switch VLANs or we can add subnets at the gateways interface. Let me show you, an, uh, just to give you an idea, let's say the manager calls you back, he's really growing, he's got a lot more security cameras, a lot more point of sale systems, and he still wants that isolation between them all. So we add some switches and the red is production and notice I'm taking the uplink, the uplink of this switch to one of the ports on the zero, uh, RV082 and we'll put this on a different VLAN and this will be our production. We'll put all our devices, point of sale systems, servers, manager laptops, etc. All that on this switch. Then the security cameras are going to be, we're going to take a switch and dedicate that security cameras and they're going to have the uplink here and this is going to go into a port and we'll put this port on a separate VLAN. And we'll put the WAP out here and then all the wireless security IP cameras here. And they will, these will be on different subnets because now we're using the switch VLAN to do the same thing as we did by creating subnets on the, on the router's interface. These will be separate and isolated. Then we can go ahead and add some additional WAPs here on this switch for more guest access points. So these will be WAPs out here, wireless, and more and more, imp more and more of the guests who walk into the real estate store can access or connect to many, many wireless access points in the retail outlet. And again, they're gonna go to a different VLAN, they're gonna go right out the internet. Nobody can see nobody, and it all works great. So this is just a different idea, doing the same thing. This is showing you kind of how you would grow. Obviously, it's not ready for that kind of, we want to bump this up maybe to a Juniper that has gigabit ports, VLAN capability. But just to give you an idea, let, let your mind think about this.
So from our port management, our switch, we could have went ahead and taken ports and put them on various VLANs, and then that VLAN would have been dedicated to, say, um, security cameras and the security camera wireless access points. This one for the guest access points, and they go out VLAN 4. And these are 